We are on the air, Trailblazer basketball. Carrick Segmiller, Devin Dixon, Mike Olson, coming at you on a Friday night inside the Burns Arena, and do we have a good one for you tonight. Dixie State coming in tonight, tied for first in the RMAC, 14-3 overall, 9-2 in Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference play, and you've got the team currently in third place, but just one game behind Dixie State and Black Hill State in first place. They are, are right on their heels. Colorado Mesa, 12 and five overall, eight and three in the RMAC. And can this team play? They can shoot the ball, they can score inside. Made 18 three-point shots against Fort Lewis on Saturday. And we hope, guys, that they got all those out of their system and they won't be raining threes like that again tonight. Well, they took 23, <laughs> 18 to 23. They they really shot the lights out, so it's a very good shooting team. Inside, shoot a very high percentage. I think they're sixth in the nation in field goal percentage, 11th in the nation in three-point field goal percentage, so they can really shoot the rock. Dixie State, on the other hand, has defended well, though, guys. I mean, yep. they're holding the bonus to just below 33%, so, and, and, you know, they've been working on the closeout a lot in practice. Coach Judge is telling me that it's a huge emphasis, and, you know, obviously, they've got to really defend. He hopes that, you know, the guys that he has in his normal ro rotation can get the job done. But I think him and his assistant coaches are ready for some in-game adjustments if needs be. We're going to see some matchup zone, some 2-3, and probably starting the man-to-man -man look. But uh, I'm really excited about the in-game adjustments between these two coaching staffs. A very short TDS pregame show for you tonight as uh, we got on the air a little bit late. But let's give you some keys to the game and some starting lineups. Mike, let's go over to you. Uh, what have you got tonight for our Lonnie Boys Barbecue's keys to the game? Well, number one, they have Dixie has to disrupt the flow of Colorado Mesa's offense. That that disruption is going to be key. Number two, they've got to run, 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 run. This team will allow a lot of points if they'll let them. So they've got to get out and run. Third, and we say it every week, their turnovers. They cannot afford to give this team extra possession. So limit the turnovers and then just play solid. Yeah, got to value the basketball. The transition offense is going to be important. They got to attack the offensive glass. That is a huge strength yeah. of Dixie State, not necessarily that of the Mavericks. And then I'm with you, the shot selection, that's something Juddy always really encourages. So, and then defensively, the ball screen defense, the three-point line, you know, knowing the personnel, having the scouting report ready to go. So once you get on the floor, you can actually you're going to be some keys for the defensive end for Coach Judkins as well. Those are your keys to the game now for some Boulevard home. Starting lineups quickly for Colorado Mesa. They start like this. Michael Skinner, Tommy Nuno, Georgie Dancer, Ethan Menzies, and Jared Small getting the start tonight for the Mavericks. For Dixie State, the same five we've gotten accustomed to over the last couple of games. It'll be Jack Pagenkopf, Dason Youngblood, Frank Stain, Hunter Schofield, and Jared Green. Mavericks led by head coach Mike DeGeorge, his second season in Grand Junction. Improved the Mavericks by eight wins from uh, the year before last season in his first season in Grand Junction. He has this team on the right track. Let's play basketball. But Menzies jumping for the Mavericks, and it will be Jared Green for the Trailblazers. Toss is made. Mavericks are going to win the toss, and we are with you on radio, TV, and Internet as the Mavericks settle into the offense, moving left to right across your radio dial. Here's Skinner, top of the key for Nuno. Nuno, left side now small. Small backdoor cut inside. Dancer missed it. Ball tapped around, and Dixie State's got the rebound. Pagenkopf pushing it up the right side. Behind the back dribble, leaving for Youngblood. Youngblood to the left wing. Now to Stain. Stain quickly to Jared Green. Green to Pagenkopf. Pagenkopf looking inside to Green. Nothing there, so they'll swing it back around, reverse it to the left wing, and Youngblood skip pass, right corner, three ball on the way. Frank Stain up and in. Thank you very much. You cannot have drawn up a more textbook offensive set for Dixie State for that first possession of the game. The ball was rotated four different times, very patient, found Frank Stain wide open in the corner. 3-0 Dixie State lead, 19-03 remaining. First half, this Maverick offense, a team that can really score it, but they give up a lot of points on the defensive end. Scored 105 points on Saturday against Fort Lewis in regulation. And that's not their season high, 109 yeah. is. Nuno, shot clock expiring, baseline left side, no, tapped out, offensive rebound into the hands of Dancer. Dancer to Skinner, he slices through the lane, he'll be fouled on his way to the bucket. Really aggressive move there by Skinner. 
And when you dart and you go that quick, really hard to adjust. Great second chance opportunity now from the stride for Mesa. We talked about that textbook offensive set for Dixie State. Just the opposite defense. You don't want to give up an offensive rebound that first possession of the game. Now guys from Mesa are hungry for it. They know those offensive rebounds are going to be there and they're gonna crash even harder. Skinner, 79% at the free throw line. He misses the first. His third season at Colorado Mesa after playing at Lamar Community College. He rattles home the second, and it's a 3-1 Dixie State lead as Colorado Mesa. Onto the scoreboard. 18.30 to go, first half, Dixie State. With the lead inside Jerry Green, left block. Waiting for Stain, right back to Green, re-entry, high off the window and in from the left side for Jared Green. Another solid possession there, this time Dixie going inside. They've got a size advantage inside, and they're taking advantage of that with Jared Green in the post. 5-1, Trailblazers by four. Nuno looking inside, pass is made, but a steal afterwards. As Youngblood cuts off another pass ahead to Stain. Stain no loop passes Schofield, and he's fouled on his way to the bucket. Oh, Stain right there with a pretty outlet, receives the pass, stays in the middle of the floor, no looks it. Right time, right place. Watch this for our television users. And just enough to really give Schofield the advantage to get all the way into the lane. No chance to take a charge there defensively and earn a trip to the line. Okay. And Jack Pagenkopf on your right. You've got Hunter <laughs> Schofield on your left. You know, that, that's a great options, decision. Options, great options, options. Great options. Schofield makes the first free throw. Uses every bit of the rim and it falls through. Second one on the way, a little strong. First one was that way as well, but it found its way through. Second rim's out. 6-1, Dixie State by five. 17-53 to go. Schofield six in the conference in scoring. What a great pickup for Judkins and the boys. Jared Small traveled in the lane. Michael Skinner throws down a two-hand flush, but the travel stops the possession, and it will not count. It didn't count, but you can see the athleticism that Skinner has. He got up. He's got some hops. He's twitchy. And Mike DeGeorge wants a timeout already. It's a 30-second timeout. We're going to keep it right here and talk this thing through. 17.48 to go. Dixie State two for two from the field. Colorado Mesa is uh, has not got a field goal. 0 for 3 from the field. They do have one free throw. Again, a team that uh, can really score it. But coming off, you know, the highest of highs. Coach, uh, we'll go over to Mike. You, you coach with Coach Judkins. You've been around this game a long time. How hard is it to get your team to kind of refocus after such a huge performance like Colorado Mesa saw on, on Saturday night against Fort Lewis? Well, you, you definitely want to, you don't want to hold them back. You know, you shoot 18 for 23, you're going to let them go. Let them go until they can't, you know, it, it becomes a, a detriment to the team. And right now, it, it's important to look at what type of looks Colorado Mesa is going to get. If they're getting open looks early, that's a bad sign for Dixie State because those shots will eventually start falling. Back in play we go. Six to one, Dixie State. The five point lead, 17.40 to go, first half, Schofield. Top of the key, over to Stain. The whip it back around the horn. Pagenkopf now right wing, pump fake, puts the ball on the floor. Knocked out of his hands, regains. Now he's at the baseline right side. Pagenkopf still with it, dribbles all the way back to the free throw line and tries to bounce a pass, go a little pick and roll with Schofield, and the pass is kicked. Now Jack, he can score it. We've seen the triple-double earlier in the season. He's, what, number 25 in the nation in assists, leads the RMAC Conference. See what he wants to try to do early. It's the assist and inside. a bounce pass on the inbounds entry from Pagenkopf to the left side of the bucket. Schofield catches and scores. And it's an 8-1, to 7-point lead for the Trailblazers, 17-10 to go. That's why you put your point guard there to the inbound oh. it, right? Yep. Nuno, skip pass, left wing dancer, pump fake, skipping a skinner. Doesn't shoot a lot of threes, but he takes that one, Ooh. missed it, and Frank Stain goes up high and takes down a grown man's rebound with one arm, because I think the other one was kind of tied up. Pagenkopf holding right wing. Puts the ball on the floor, pick and roll with Jared Green. A little slow getting the entry pass though. Green, fadeaway jumper blocked, and into the hands of Dancer. Here come the Mavericks. Top of the key, Nuno. Nuno. One of the dynamic players in this conference. A no-look pass inside to Menzies, and he lays it up and in. Delayed pick and roll, and I do mean delayed, but they still got the right pass. The timing actually perfect. Green was on his back, and Menzies finishes at the rim with the lay-in. 16-15. Pagenkopf to Stain. Stain to Schofield. Schofield looking back door, nothing there. Instead, they'll swing it to the left corner. Youngblood for three. 
but before he could even get the ball out of his hands, an offensive foul against Frank Stain in the paint. You take a look for our television audience, just hedged yeah. into it with a little hip thrust. Just not a lot, but enough to draw the whistle and the correct call. And we've got changes on both sides. Andre Wilson and Cameron Chat went in for Dixie State. For the Mavericks, Clay Verk, Ethan Richardson, and Colton Peterson into the ball game. And Peterson can really shoot it. 41 three-point makes this season for Peterson. Richardson working inside on Chatwin, spinning inside, hanging, hitting with the foul. And he is a very good player. This is only his fourth appearance of the season. But they're going to call. Yeah, they get the foul against Chatwin. That brings us to the media timeout. Richardson making the most of his few appearances so far this season. Under 16 media, 15.50 to go. Dixie State an 8-5 lead. 60-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. World is here to help you connect to adventure and explore the outdoors with friends and family. Offering new and pre-owned RVs to fit every budget and thousands of parts and accessories for any need. Camping World has it all. With over 130 super centers nationwide, you're never far from America's number one RV dealer. No matter where your adventures take you, whether you need an RV, parts, or service, Camping World is here to help you every step of the way. Visit Camping World in St. George or shop CampingWorld.com today. Look back inside the Burns Arena. Trailblazers leading an 8 to 5, and Ethan Richardson trying to complete the three point play for the Mavericks. It is Coaches for Cancer tonight. So you're going to see on the sideline, you've got coaches and sneakers. You, your TV viewers, you can kind of see Coach Judkin's sneakers at the top of your picture there. Clean new white Clean ones. Clean new white ones. All white Nikes. I dig it. And nice. Coach McGeor DeGeorge has got some as well. Some sneakers on. Richardson will make the second, or the, the free throw, completed three point play, and it's 8 to 6. Inside, Schofield takes the dish from Youngblood, and he lays it up and in. 10-6, Trailblazers lead it. That's Hunter already two for two and one and two for the line. He's got an early five. That's a, a, a nice start for him from the field. They're going to give Dancer some space on the other end. He misses that three-pointer badly. And Hunter Schofield the rebound. And Pagankoff quickly ahead to Youngblood, who snuck out in front of everyone, and he lays it in. 12-6, Trailblazers lead it. 15-15 to go in the first. Defend, rebound, run. That time, Mesa did not get back, and a great pass to Dason, who finishes. They'll go inside to Richardson. Two Trailblazers go for the steal. They both miss, and Richardson lays it up and in. He's got five, but they go quickly up the floor again to the Trailblazers. Ahead uh, to Schofield, and he'll lay it in. Yeah, as good as Richardson looks on the offensive end, he did not get back in time. Schofield outraced him, and another easy bucket. More points in the paint, which is a huge key tonight for Coach Judkins. 14-8. Trailblazers a six-point lead, and we are literally sprinting up and down the floor inside the Burns Arena. I shouldn't say we, it's the players. Us broadcasters are pretty stationary here. Dancer from the left wing, jump step into the lane, leaning, can't get the finger roll to go. Dixie State has the rebound, a pagan cop up the right side. A slow up past the young blood right corner. Dason, top of the key to Hunter Schofield. Now Andre Wilson. Wilson, left wing, couple of dribbles. And it's stripped out of his hands, and it goes out of bounds. Dixie State going to maintain the possession. Boy, Peterson stripped it out of his hands, and everybody lost it. Nobody knew where it was, and it goes out of bounds, and Dixie State will still have it. You know, good patience there by Wilson, but good poke away. And it just kind of floated it's, through the air. I don't think anybody everyone, saw it. Where, where is it going? 13 seconds to shoot for the Trailblazers. Bounce in from Youngblood to Schofield, and Hunter will lay it up and in. He's got nine points in the first six minutes. And I think they've scored now on the same inbounds baseline as when Pagankoff had that helper earlier. I think that looked like the same play. 16 to eight, the Trailblazers lead it with 13.58 to go first, first half. Nuno harassed by Youngblood. Entry pass right side to Richardson. 
Richardson double teamed, Youngblood helping. He's able to fight through it. They're gonna call a foul. And they're gonna give him the continuation. A little late there, but. Youngblood gonna get called for the foul. Boy, it looked like the hack happened and then there was a complete pivot. 180 and then the layup. I'd love to see this one again. That's some NBA continuation. The ball's tied up, little bump there, brings the ball down and goes back up. That looked pretty clean. That was a tough call there, but you got to play through yeah. it. He lays it up and it, he gets the free throw to go. 16 to 11. Trailblazers, a five point lead, and it's been two. Conventional three-point plays. Chat win the other way for three for Dixie State. No, Youngblood fighting for the rebound. He tips it out. And Colorado Mesa has it. That's 16 a big, to 11. That's a big three-point play for Richardson. Holy yeah. cow. He's come off the bench eight minutes already, three for three, plus perfect from the line. He's been sensational. Solid player. He's, he's definitely going to be a handful for Dixie. Skinner. Skip pass to Burke. Burke has got it. Burke 6'8", 260 to the left side. Three on the way from Peterson. It clangs out. Dixie State has the rebound. Youngblood up the left side, center of the floor. Hesitates. Now to Jacob Nichols. Just checked in for the Trailblazers. He's been a spark plug lately. He'll go pick and roll. Nichols inside. Can't get the layup to go. A good look. Frank Stain saying, man, I had the assist. Here comes Colorado Mesa. Yeah, I'd like to see him use that left hand instead of trying to use that right hand from the left side. And Nichols going to get a steal the other way as they try to go inside to Richardson again. Youngblood to the left corner, Stain catch and shoot three, too much on it. And Michael Skinner goes up high and pulls it down for the Mavericks. Skinner will push it across the timeline, loses, and is stolen away by Youngblood. Youngblood loses his footing and throws it ahead to Cameron Chatwood. We are wild and out of control here inside the Burns Arena. 16 to 11, Trailblazers by five. Probably more the tempo that Mesa wants right now. You're gonna see maybe a little more patient set here by Dixie State. Chatwood. And off to Wilson. Wilson hesitates, then drives inside and lays it up and in. I think he wanted to pass, and inside was so wide open, drove inside and laid it off the window. Yeah, excellent, excellent hesitation. You described it perfectly. Froze the defense and then continued on to lay it with a little kiss off the glass. 18 to 11, Trailblazers by seven. Inside Richardson, he'll catch, pump fake, and then lay it in. Boy, Ethan Richardson. Is Doing a breath work. of fresh air Big. for this Colorado Mesa squad, keeping him in it. Big bucket after big bucket since entering this game. Dixie State's got to start doubling him, I think. He's got eight already. Youngblood will drive inside a teardrop floater just over the edge of the front iron, and he gets it to go. Both teams converting at a high level right now. Well, that's what you want. You want your point guard to get real deep into that offense, penetrate a little bit. It provides a lot more options for offense. We're under 12, so a timeout coming on the next whistle. 11-20 remaining, 20-13, to 13, Dixie State the lead, and a whistle and a foul against Youngblood trying to fight through a screen. And that'll take us to the under 12 media timeout. 11-19 to go, Dixie State 20, Colorado Mesa 13, the one minute timeout and back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. When Southern Utah thinks of home furnishings, they think of Boulevard Home. But when Boulevard Home thinks about home, Southern Utah comes to mind. In 1974, local pioneer descendant Tony Whitwer decided to start a furniture business. He decided to name it after Southern Utah's most famous street, St. George Boulevard. Even though Tony has retired, his family's legacy still lives in who we are, a company dedicated to one goal, making your house home. Boulevard Home. Home is who we are. to go. Welcome back inside the Burns Arena. Trailblazers a 20-13 lead. 
Dason Youngblood just picked up his second foul. And that's big. I mean, Those you, are got, both you want tough. Dason and or Jack Pagankoff on the floor as much as you can, and they're both pretty close calls. Well, I was talking to Judkins earlier today, and he said, I got to have one of those two on the court yeah. at all times. And that's why they're two of the, the league leader well, and really the team leaders in minutes play. And so, and those are tough calls against Dason. Out of the timeout, here's Dancer. Colorado Mesa with possession. It's just a seven point lead. Small will fire away, straight away three pointer. No. Ball tapped around, Nichols gonna save it in. He stepped on the end line and then crashes into the scorer's table. Well, not the media table, really, at the south end of the arena. And he'll jog back in. He really hit the table hard, he loves his man. hustle. But man, it, the table was definitely in position, took a charge. They already got the right leg taped up a little bit from a similar collision in practice last week. I'll tell you what, if you're going to crash into the scores table, the, the Boulevard mattress is right there. Yeah, well, he missed the mattress. Nuno inside will get it to go. 15-foot jumper, his first bucket of the night. You don't want to get him going. Well, he's eighth in the conference of scoring, and, you know, he can play one through five. He, yeah, they yeah. use him in so many different ways, and that time showing you his slash and finish ability. Wilson inside to Schofield to Stain, and it's stripped away, and here's Dancer ahead of everybody, and he'll lay it up and in. And he lost his footing when he went down. Maybe he's trying to slip or, or maybe trying to draw a foul, maybe. Nichols bouncing inside. Hunter Schofield, two-hand thump on the dish from Jacob Nichols. 22-17. Dixie State by five, and Schofield has 11. It's a great interior pass right there. That's a point guard knowing where his big guy is going to be and getting the ball perfect timing. Nuno. Pump fake, then fires away. Missed it. And the offensive rebound to Ethan Menzies. And after that, Stain's going to tie the ball up. And they get a jump ball call, then it's going back the other way. Coach DeGeorge looking out and saying, was there a little arm on that, maybe? Maybe, maybe yeah, but official quickly jumped it up. And, you know, the hands part of the ball, we'd have to yeah. see it in slow-mo to really be precise. He's got to go with the official on that one, give him the benefit of the doubt. We are halfway through the first half, 9-55 remaining inside the Burns Arena. Leighton Parker just checked in for the Trailblazers. Jared Green back in as well. And a foul underneath the basket. I believe they're going to get Tommy Nuno as he forced Jared Green out of bounds underneath the bucket. That'll be his second. Yeah, that's the only thing really a little bit of a foul situation starting to emerge for Dixie State. But right now Mesa just two fouls. That was going to line it up on the right side of the paint. And here we go, into Stain. Stain back to Pagankoff, right corner. The Hunter Schofield will swing it to Parker. Parker, pick and roll with Schofield. The pass was too high, and it's stolen away. That ball hung up there for too long, and either, otherwise Hunter would have had maybe another dunk. All on our base of the steal. Turnover number three for Dixie State. Burke to Jared Small, Centennial, Colorado. Small hesitates. Skip pass. Dancer puts the ball on the floor. Penetrates. High off the window. Couldn't get it to fall, but guess who? Ethan Richardson there to clean it up and to put back off the window. 22-19. Dixie State lead is down to three. Yeah, he's got a game high 12 now, and he is perfect from the field. Pagankoff. Good dish inside. Jared Green couldn't get the short one to go. Frank Stain offensive rebound. One dribble. Oh. Shot is blocked by Small, but it goes back to Dixie State. Parker for three straight away off the right side. Jared Green offensive rebound. Trailblazers reset again. Pagankoff. Three-point lands straight away. Hesitates. Puts the defender to sleep. Drives inside. Missed the layup short. And the rebound to Skinner. Dixie's really got to convert on those four to six foot jumpers. They're doing a great job of getting good position, just not converting on those little chip shots. Megan Kopp will get a tip on out of bounds on the way back up the floor. 8.27 to go, first half. Dixie State a 22 19 lead. Yeah, and they're shooting 10 to 18 from the field, 55% for the Trailblazers, yet you almost feel like they yeah, missed something they should have had. On the flip side, 44%, 8 to 18 for the Mavericks. Here's Skinner. Three-point land right side into the corner. Small for three on the way. Too strong. And Dixie State the rebound. 0 for 5 of the Mavericks from beyond the arc. Pagankoff whipping it to Parker. Pump fake right wing. Gets the defender off his feet. We'll pass it to Green. Green to Pagankoff. Straight away three. Bang! 
And give up a good three, get it back to Jack, and Jack gets maybe a little better look. I thought Leighton could have took that yeah. original three, but unselfish play there. That was a great decision by Leighton Parker. Just extended the defense just a little bit to create that open shot. A whistle and a foul the other way. It's Pagankoff picking up the foul, and that'll bring us to the under eight. 7.41 remaining. Dixie State a 25-19 advantage, the 60-second timeout and back. The Trailblazer Basketball Network. A lot can happen when your sidekick is a dog. Kicker! Kicker! Kicker. Oh, I got this. That's why you use Zelle in the Mountain America app. It makes sending and receiving money fast and easy. So Kicker and I can keep the adventure going. Zelle is now in the Mountain America mobile app. Quickly send and receive money from almost anyone with a bank account in the U.S. Kicker, my sleeping bag. I've got this. All with the convenience and security of the Mountain America app. There is a place where looking out means looking in. Where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever. Where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered. Where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. Welcome back inside the Burns Arena. If you want to talk about the battle inside the battle, how about it's the post players? Hunter Schofield, 11 points for the Trailblazers. He's 5 of 5 from the field. On the other side, Ethan Richardson has 12 points for the Mavericks. He's 5 for 5 as well. That is definitely tonight's battle between the battle tonight yeah, inside the battle. They're definitely getting after it. And what's interesting is where, where those two are getting their points. So when, when you look at points in, in the paint, uh, Colorado Mace is definitely dominating the points in the paint. Hunter Schofield is definitely getting his points, but they're mid-range jumpers and outside. Mavericks with possession out of the timeout. Small is tied up by Leighton Parker, and the alternate arrow should keep it here. Dixie State had the last jump ball. 16 fouls called against Dixie State in the first half, just two against Colorado Mesa. But the Mavericks will have free throws from here on out, at least one free throw until they get to 10 of the double bonus. Well, I know Coach Judkins never satisfied, but not a bad start here for the Blazers at home. Six-point lead. I think they're working hard. Aside from Richardson, they played well. The answer to Virk misses the three, and Richardson is fouled. Going up for the rebound, and that's a, it's a tough... 6'10", 225. He's long. Yeah, he's, he's very long. But, but he's also skilled. He's, he's good. He's good finesse. He's smart. He knows how to go get the ball. You can see maybe push off a little bit with the forearm, but he's good going up and down. Uh, he, he's going to be a tough matchup. He's, he's a solid player. Well, he can t he's a Juco transfer from Fresno Community College, so already a couple years of college experience under his belt. Outside of Fresno City Community College, yeah. talk about well, Coach Jeremiah Barnes from last year. He knows this kid very well, and uh, he committed to West Virginia. West Virginia. And spent some time, he was going to spend some time in West Virginia. Didn't quite work out, but decided to stay in Colorado. He's a D1 level player. It looks like both, it right now, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah. Both free throws up and in, 25-21. Dixie State a four-point lead. Pagan Cop. Inside to Jared Green, his shot blocked at the bucket. And here come the Mavericks. With seven minutes remaining, first half. Dixie State 55% from the field. Colorado Mesa 40%. And yet, just a four-point lead for the Trailblazers. Richardson inside. No. Frank staying the rebound. The one-handed rebound again. And they're trying to work the offense through Richardson. That time, tough little mid-range jumper doesn't get it. Speaking of mid-range jumpers, Pagan Cop will try one left side. It rims out. Loop de loop and popped out. And here come the Mavericks after the rebound from Colton Peterson. Over to Small. Small working inside. Did he travel? Travel. Dixie State will get it back. 6.24 remaining. Take another look at it on our replay monitor. And he stopped. Definitely shuffled the feet again before he went back up. And now the official warning, Coach Jenkins, of a flop. Don't flop, he said. There's an emphasis there. Yeah. Hey, was that Jack? Jack they picked it up. Did he say number 10? Yep. 
We get a warning. And then it's essentially the same as a delay of game technical after that. Trailblazers with possession. 6.13 to go. Woo, Paganikoff, what a pass inside of Schofield. A no more pass. Threads the needle and Hunter scores. He's got 13. Four helpers, and that might have been the sweetest yeah. of the night. The other ones were on pretty easy inbounds passes. Yeah. That one was the touch over the top on the hands. 27-21, Dixie State by six. With 5.50 remaining. Skinner looking inside, decides against the pass inside. Instead, he'll give to Menzies. And Menzies travel. Back-to-back -back travels called against Colorado Mesa. Yeah, seven turnovers for the Mavericks, just three for the Trailblazers. So uh, Dixie State enforcing some, and not and they're pretty stingy, not giving up too many extra possessions to Colorado Mesa right now. And that's what we talked about in the keys. You got to you know take care of the basketball in this situation in a game like this. Two good teams. 27-21, Dixie State a six-point lead. Trying to make it eight or nine here. Stain driving inside, slips and falls as he was getting ready to dish it off and turns it over. Skinner the other way for the Mavericks. Right wing, jump step into the lane, he traveled. Well, he's a strong, versatile guard. He's looking to attack, attack, attack. He got to the middle there and just kind of indecisive, and they catch him with the walk. About time for Dixie to convert here offensively. It's been a few possessions where they haven't been able to get their offense flowing and get a good look at the basket. Chatwin, Frank Stain on the angle left side. They'll work it back to the right side. Pagankoff to Wilson. Wilson bounces inside. Hunter Schofield is having himself a night. 13 points now for Schofield. Well, they've needed it. He's kind of matching Richardson. On the offensive end right now, Richardson's got 14. He's got 13. The bigs, the battle of the bigs is for real tonight, boys. And make that 15. I misspoke. And a foul against Dixie State. You're right. He's 7 for 7 from seven the field. 7 for 7 from the field with a free and 1 or 2 from the line. Yep, 1 or 2 from the line. And a foul against Chatwin. And it's 1 and 1 for the Mavericks. Well, it's all about patience for the Dixie State offense. When they're patient and they move the ball side to side, Colorado Mesa, they're having a hard time getting through screens. They're having a hard time rotating. And Hunter Schofield's finding himself wide open. If they can keep staying patient and looking for him rolling and finding those open gaps in the defense, he'll continue to, to score at will. Small going to come back into the game for the Mavericks. Clay Burke will get a breather. Tommy Nuno also waiting to get back in. And a little smaller lineup on the court right now for Coach Judkins. You got... Schofield at 6'8", and Nichols at 6'5", and then you got three guards virtually out there. Dancer leading at free throw percentage on the team. Almost 81% makes the first. He'll get one more. You know, it's interesting you bring that up, Devin, because last week, the last six minutes of the game for Dixie State, Judkins went with a very small lineup. You wonder if that was to prepare a little bit uh, for tonight's matchup. Yeah, Wilson, I mean, Wilson going to play a ton of minutes for you, but it's only about 6'2", 6 6'3". Six both free throws good for the Mavericks, and it's a 29-23 Dixie State lead. Tommy Nuno back in for CMU. Pagankoff, pick and roll with Nichols, couldn't get it to him. Jack, top of the key, Schofield, three straight away, no. Hunter, or Jacob Nichols, offensive rebound, and he puts it back in over his shoulder and out the window and in. Picking up, taking out the trash. I love it. And Nichols, right place, right time. That was kind of a tough up and flip shot off the window, too. And he's going to get a block on the other end as he blocks Menzies from behind. And here come the Trailblazers. Jack, deep three. No. And Nichols goes up and ties it up. And it's going to be a jump ball. Arrow will stay with Dixie State. So that's essentially another offensive rebound for Jacob Nichols and really Dixie State crashing the glass, Mike. I mean, they're getting after it. There's a couple of Mavericks there. Nichols goes in between them, says, yeah. my ball, I got every right to go get this thing. And he's just fighting hard. They're getting those loose balls, those 50-50 balls like that. The hustle plays. And a whistle, a foul before the inbounds pass. They go against Jared Small, just the third team foul against Colorado Mesa through the first 16 minutes. Pagan got the trigger, baseline left. Skinner standing in front of him. He'll find Parker in the left corner. Quickly to Nichols. Nichols stops the dribble, lays baseline left side, and then it's stripped away by Michael Skinner. Skinner pushes it ahead of everybody. When is Mesa going to get a three? They are 0 for 6 so far in this first half. There's 345 left in the, the first half. Nuno 
Left corner to David Rico. Rico to Nuno. Nuno, path cut off by Leighton Parker. Shot clock down to 10. Double team now as Nichols comes out to help. They pass out of it to Skinner. Skinner, skip pass to Small. Five to shoot, four to shoot. Into the lane, hanging and hits with the left. Just tosses it up off the window and it goes in. Yeah, and he had to be careful there not to really extend that arm because he was in a position where they could have called an offensive foul, but I think he did a pretty good job of just going with the left hand and finishing nicely. 31-25 and a whistle on a foul against Colorado Mesa. That will be David Rico picking up the foul and bringing us to their under four media timeout. 3.14 to go until the halftime break. Dixie State 31, Colorado Mesa 25 on your Camping World scoreboard. The one-minute timeout and back to the Burns on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. I got you right where I want you. I make this one, it's over, I win. No pressure, bring it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there. Three fourteen to go, Dixie State. The 31-25 lead and the possession out of the timeout. Quick stat check, 53% from the field for Dixie State, 28% from downtown. Meanwhile, Colorado Mesa, 39% from the field, but 0 for 6 from downtown. And a steal for Small off the inbounds pass. Euro step into the lane, will score it. The steal and the score on the other end for Jared Small, and it's a four point Dixie State lead. 31-27, three minutes even until halftime. Yeah, this Maverick team ain't going away. They're not going to back down. You're going to have to put you know, two halves together to beat them. Wilson. The whistle rings out as he drives inside, and it will be Jared Small picking up the foul. Now five team fouls against Colorado Mesa. And just like that, Ethan Richardson and Clay Verk come back into the game for the Mavericks. I think I might have seen Richardson leave a Superman cape on the bench. Yeah. He's a good player. Impressive. I, I'm impressed with him, guys. I'm not going to lie. I mean, he's really been dominant so far in the paint. Kick ball by Tommy Nuno, and Dixie State will maintain the possession. At least on the offensive end. Yes. And the same can be said about Hunter Schofield. I mean, he, he's 7 for 8, 15 points. Those guys are just battling. 2.45 remaining, Dixie State, 31-27 lead. Here's Pagankoff. Almost had his pass stolen, but Nichols able to chase it down to Parker. 10 to shoot into the left corner. Wilson with 7 to shoot. Pagankoff, left corner, 5 to shoot. Screen from Nichols. Jack pulls up straight away. Too short, and the rebound to Nuno. And then a foul against Jacob Nichols as Nichols and Nuno get their legs tangled up on the way back up the floor. And that'll send Tommy Nuno to the free throw line. Well, that's, that's a big swap right there. I mean, that, that shot by Jack Pagankoff, he misses that. Then that quick foul sends them to the line. That's a big swing. Dick, Dixie could be up 34-27. You know, uh, they could be, this could be a two-point, or a, yeah, two-point game. Jason Youngblood will check in for Jack Pagankoff. And Josh Newbold is going to come in and give Nichols a breather. Nuno to the line for one and one, and he missed the first free throw. He left it short. Newbold snares the rebound. Here's Youngblood surveying his option. Gets inside, hangs and hits over the six foot 10 Richardson, a floater, and it's 33-27 for Dixie State. Much needed bucket for Dixie State. Now they just rely on their defense to get him through this half. Nuno to the left corner, Rico for three. Too strong off the back iron. Dixie State the rebound. It's Youngblood was trapped on the bench with two fouls, and he's come in and misses that layup as he got inside on the right. And then Nuno travels. 
As everybody was clearing, he did take that floor. one extra step. It was almost like the ball when it bounced up. He, he lost it for a minute. Yep, and it just, it tripped. It, it, it almost like he was preventing himself from maybe rolling that ankle. Well, he, he didn't expect Josh Newbold to be that to close be to him. Kind of caught him off guard, <laughs> rattled him a little. Inbound pass, Parker, catch and shoot, three! It's up and in for Leighton Parker for the left wing. And just like that, a nine point lead. Oh, uh, green light special right there, nothing but twine. Beautiful rotation out of the hand. Skinner inside to Richardson. One more pass to Virk. Virk working inside. His shot, no. He's looking for a foul, doesn't get it. Dixie State, the rebound. Youngblood. Crossing over, left elbow jumper, dies on the back iron and crawls over the backboard. Well, Dacey started this game three for three, and so he missed that land in the previous trip, and then that jumper fooling off just a little bit, but I like the aggressiveness in Dacey Young. Well, that's not a bad shot. That's a no. very makeable elbow jumper. Yeah, it's a, it's, he's having that remember me moment, right? I mean, he started off so well, and then he got handcuffed with some fouls. Comes back into the game, wants to pick up right where he left off. You love his aggressiveness. He's taking good shots, just not falling. 114 to go until halftime. Here's Skinner, loses, regains, and passes inside to a wide open Richardson, and he'll flush it home with two hands. Oh, the big fella. He snapped that breakaway rim with some power. 36-29, Trailblazers by seven. Pagan comp to Schofield. Will bounce into Newbold, one dribble, and leap and lean up and under. Yes, it goes. They're gonna count the basket. Whistles ring out at the end, and a foul will go against Dixie State. It's, was it Nuno that hit the deck, or was it Skinner? Well, you're going to see just a beautiful up and under. He takes that big step baseline, wrap around reverse, and then Parker kind of clearing out on Nuno. And that should be 10, 10 fouls, so that's two shots. Yep. Yeah, Leighton didn't need to really do that. Maybe a little bit frustrated, maybe a little John going, I'm not yeah. sure, but he kind of, he, he definitely kind of grabbed him and kind of tried to throw him back out of the way so he can get in position if that ball missed. And Nuno, an 80% free throw shooter coming into tonight, has missed his first two free throw attempts. He'll have one more. On the way and in. Just like that, Small will check in for Nuno. 38-30. Eight-point Dixie State lead, 50.6 seconds remaining. Pagan Koff to Wilson. Wilson back to Jack. Jack going to throw it away, looking for somebody inside. Nobody was there except Michael Skinner. Mavericks have another steal into the left corner. Dancer, pump fake, drives the end line. Skip pass into the right corner. Here comes Virk. Virk stopped at the right block. Out to Small. Small drive inside, the runner banked it, scored it. 38-32, Dixie State has it. 18 ticks remaining, shot clock is off. On the way for the last shot here, Jack Pagenkoff getting the call in. Dixie will look to have the last possession of the half. Look for them to make a move in about six seconds. Seven and six, and here comes Jack to the left side. Whipping it to Newbold for three, straight away. Bang! Josh Newbold! up and in to end the half and Dixie State will take the nine point lead into the halftime break 41-32 Josh Newbold coming in putting in some big minutes down the stretch we love that pick and pop there Jack Pagenkoff came off the screen Colorado Mesa looking for him to drive but Josh Newbold with the pick and pop three pointer at the top of the key a nine point lead for the Trailblazers 41-32 they lead it 54% for the field for Dixie State in the first half 18 of 33 Four of nine from downtown. Meanwhile, Colorado Mesa, 12 of 28 from the field, 42% there, and 0 for 7 from the field after going 18 of 23 against Fort Lewis Saturday night. Let's take a look at our first half highlights before we go to break. And there was a lot of them for Dixie State. And it was Frank Stain starting things off for the Trailblazers, splashing it home from the right corner. And then it turned in to the inside the paint show. Jared Green getting one there. It was Hunter Schofield and Dacent Youngblood early sharing the ball. It was classic Coach Judkins basketball early on. And like I said, with their patience was so good. When, when they were patient and executing their offense and really forcing Colorado Mason to go through some screens, they were very good. And getting out in front of everybody and scoring early and really adjusting this Colorado Mason defense to stay awake. There's Andre Wilson getting in for the bucket. 
Yeah, and everybody contributed. Yeah. Jack had an early three, knocked it down, you know, got it back after some unselfish. And then Jack with a beautiful dive, probably yes. the best pass he made in that entire first half. Schofield, two of his 15. And then look at that, Jason Youngblood. Did he use glass or not? I couldn't tell. It went down. It was beautiful. Parker for three from the left wing. Knocks it in. He's getting involved in the offense. And how about Josh Newbold? Right before the halftime break, he splashes it home. And the Trailblazers with the nine-point lead. Let's continue to break this down as we just segue right into our halftime report. Devin, what, what did you see? I mean, you look at the stat sheet. Dixie State shooting the ball well. Uh, only two free throws for the Trailblazers. So that's probably one thing Coach Chuckins will go and say, hey, we got to get to the free throw line more. I know, you know, we didn't get many calls in that first half early in the early going. But we got to shoot more free throws in the second half. When I'm looking at that, you know, seven turnovers is probably too many. But really, otherwise, a really good half for Dixie State. Yeah, seven seems maybe one or two too many. But you force nine, so you'll live with that. 0 for 7 for the Mavericks from outside surprised me after 18 makes out of 23 last time they played. A couple days, you know, and they probably didn't just want to come in and hoist because you're not going to shoot 18 for 23 all the time. But I'm sure probably a little bit disappointed they couldn't get a one or two to drop from outside. You know, you get a couple triples to fall out of seven attempts and you're a lot closer at the half. Right. I think the statistic that really speaks to that is the assist. Dixie's shelling out 14 assists to Colorado Mesa's five. So Dixie doing a good job of sharing the basketball. Colorado Mesa coming down in. And some of those shots are just... They're not high percentage shots, uh, but they're definitely shots that they can knock down in the second half. You look at it, Dixie State four threes, Colorado Mesa no threes in a nine point game. That, that's kind of the lead because everything else is pretty even. Rebounds are even at 16 apiece. You look inside, points in the paint are pretty close. Points off turnovers are pretty close. Colorado Mesa with seven second chance points. I mean, really, you, you're looking at that right now. Dixie State sharing the ball, finding good buckets, and then just making a couple three-point shots, and that's the difference right now. Yeah, but both coaches are going to have to take a look at the big, man. And they put on a show. Ethan Richardson, 6-7, 4-4 from the line. So you can't just put him on the line. You can't go hack-a-shack on him because he, he didn't miss. I mean, and 16 points. They're going to have to adjust on how they're defending him. And then... Obviously, the other guy on the other side for your old Trailblazers, Hunter Schofield. I mean, had that one dunk. You know, he's not he, he's not scared to take a three. They've got to do a better job on the pick and roll situation. It didn't. It wasn't only Schofield, but he, he led him obviously in the scoring. But those two guys are definitely causing some problems for the defense. Have you ever seen anything like that? I mean, you got Hunter on one side, Richardson comes in, the big man just just going at it. The first. 10 minutes of the game. Have you ever seen anything like that? It was fantastic. It was fun. Yeah, it's, it's great. You know what the game plan. Both teams going to try to attack the paint and, and doing a very good job. Right now, points in the paint. Dixie leads 28-24. That is a, an epic battle there between the two big guys. You know, and the, the Mavericks bench actually outscoring Dixie State 16 to 12. A little bit of a surprise because we've seen Dixie State's bench be tremendous. We got to remember Richardson came off the bench. So those are all on him. So other than that, nobody on the Mavericks bench hurt you whatsoever, and yet you still got 12. So slow him down. Uh, obviously, Mesa could get the three ball going in the second half. I thought Jared Small did a nice job for the Mavericks in a supporting role there. Three of five, six points. Had a couple of, you know, had a rebound and two blocks and a steal. So he had a nice little balanced box score in that first half. And then I thought Jason Youngblood did, did a really nice job in that supporting role there, going three for five in the first half. Those guys stood out as well as the two bigs that we previously mentioned. It's our Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report. Let's do this. Let's take our halftime break. Take a five-minute timeout, then we'll come back and we'll continue to break this thing down and look ahead to the second half and see what Dixie State has got to do to wrap this thing up and get win number 15 on the season. Five-minute time back, timeout and back with more Seven Oaks Jewelers halftime report. You know, we've been brainstorming for new ideas on Trailblazer Weekly, and we thought, why don't we try to get some more well-known personalities on the show? And then we thought, who better than Brooks the Bison? He would be a fantastic guest host. Okay, Brooks, in five, four, three. Obviously, being a co-host didn't work out the way we planned. So we thought, we can throw him in the control room and he can help run the show. But he's got hooves instead of hands, so he couldn't exactly push the buttons or control the dials that he needed to. And as you can imagine, we had a terrible show that week. I mean, nothing was right. We were coming from breaks when we didn't even realize we were live. It just, it just didn't work out. 
So we kept thinking about it, and finally, light bulb. He can't mess up being a camera operator, right? Wrong. He couldn't wear the headset, which means he couldn't hear the director. Uh, Brooks actually doesn't know right from left, believe it or not. And he spent more time taking selfies and posting to social media than running his camera. I mean, who knew that Brooks the Bison had his own Instagram? We decided that Brooks was better off in his natural habitat where he belongs. Trailblazer Weekly, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. on CEC TV, Radio Dixie 91.3 FM, and Dixie State Athletics YouTube page. You know, we may have started out small, but we were great. Families and fans rallied behind their team. The community cared, and everyone showed up to cheer. Now, we're bigger than ever. Dixie State is going to the Vision One. But at the end of the day, it's the community and fans that make us great. Whether you give five bucks or a thousand, every dollar, every seat in the stands, every one of you can help blaze our trail to Division I athletics. Because this is our team. Radio Dixie 91.3, Young the Giant, something to believe in. John, what song do you want to hear? Next, Miss Calendris. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Take the road less traveled, run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, fun shine, pouring on me. Think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream. For the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not as they seem. Art is long and time is fleeting, and our hearts, though stout and brave, still like muffled drums are beating, funeral marches to the grave. In the world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac of life, be not like dumb driven cattle, be a hero in the strife. Lives of great men all remind us that our lives can be sublime. And departing, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another, sailing over life's solemn moon, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother, seeing, shall take heart again. Let us then be up and doing, with a heart for any fate. Still achieving, still pursuing. 
learn to labor and to wait. Trailblazers uh, get 55% from the field, 54% uh, from the field in the first half. And, and we went through all the stats before uh, before the break, and, and they're pretty even, other than the difference between Dixie State with four three-point shots, Colorado Mesa uh, not converting it. You know, if they convert a couple more of those threes, the shooting percentages are probably right around the same thing. And, uh, you know, it's been a pretty even performance in, in Colorado Mesa. You know they're a team that they can score points in a hurry. They average over 80 points per game. So for Dixie State to hold them to 32 at the half, if they duplicate that performance, not only is Dixie State doing what they want to do offensively, but defensively, I think that maybe that's one thing we haven't talked about you know, as much. And then I know that the shots aren't falling, but if Dickey State can repeat that performance defensively and, you know, Colorado Mesa pacing for 64 or 65 points, that's almost 20 points under their season average. So they got to continue to get the job done defensively as well. And the big difference in offensive philosophies was on display. I mean, you know, they want to rely on the three and then drive and dish. Meanwhile, Dixie State more free fall flowing. They're running more pick and pop, pick and roll, and then they're reversing the ball a lot. And, and 14 assists for Dixie State to five just jumps out at me, like you mentioned earlier, Ols. I mean, that's a huge, huge stat that Coach Judkins teams, as long as I've been around watching, even when he was at Snow College, Mike, I mean, he loves playing unselfish basketball, and I thought that was really on display in that first half. And, and you know, he wasn't happy last Friday night with the defensive effort, <laughs> and they got the win going away rather easily. But I think holding this Mesa team to 32, I think I, that's acceptable yeah. uh, in, in that first half. I know he would love to have kept him in the 20s if possible, but uh, I think other than Richardson, nobody else really hurt the Trailblazers on that end of the floor. If they can duplicate that effort defensively the second half, they'll get some things going offensively, but I think that's the recipe for that success in the first half started on the defensive right. end and carried over the offense. And they did shoot 54% from yeah, the field. And four out of nine, you know, that's good. 44%, I think you'll take that all night. I thought their shot selection was really good. And then the points in the paint was, was nice. 28 points in the paint, I mean, Again, Richardson had all his points in the paint, and, and Mesa was still 24 points. It was a lot of plays down low, and, and we'll probably see more of that based on the way Schofield and Richardson played in that first half. Trailblazers a 41-32 lead at the half. It's a, it's a game featuring two teams. And Mavericks riding a four-game win streak, and they've won 12 of the last 15. And Dixie State uh, on a new three-game win streak after winning their first 10 and then losing three out of four. And it was too good teams tonight you know something's got to give and in a team like that in a game like that Dixie State wins the first half we're about to see who's going to win the second half and well you know. and historically Carrick coach John Judkins teams have been better second half teams yes. I mean that 10-0 start was great you plateaued there I'll reach all the way up to number six in the rankings and right now Dixie State 23rd in the latest poll but it's not how you start it's how you finish and, and Juddy preaches that all season long well you can attest to that okay. You watch these, these first four minutes is going to tell us a lot, guys. Defensively, how they're going to rotate. Offensively, where they keep going through Hunter Schofield. Who's going to step up and be that second option? But look for an exciting second half of basketball. And as always, Juddy wants some kills. He wants three yep. stops in a row, yep. uh, especially right now with a comfortable lead. It's not a safe lead, but it's a comfortable lead on your home court. You keep getting some kills. You know, you get three or four kills in the second half, and you keep shooting the way you are and defending with some aggressiveness. They're going to be, you know, in position to seal this at the end of the game. But I expect the Mavericks to shoot better in the second half. Yeah. Well, well, the X factor in this thing is the Burns Arena crowd, right? If they can get some exciting, maybe a dunk, a couple back-to-back three-pointers, get this place rolling, and, and that'll be the difference. They can steal that momentum and keep it. That'll be huge for the Trailblazers. 20 minutes up on the second half clock. Both teams going back to the original starters. So for Dixie State, it'll be Pagan and Koff, Youngblood, Stain, Schofield, and Green. And for the Mavericks, it'll be Skinner, Nuno, Dancer, Menzies, and Small. And watch on offense for Mesa, how Dixie State defends the ball screens, especially when Richardson comes into the game. That's something they'll probably adjust in the second half. Dixie State going to pick Colorado Mesa up at half court, try to force a trap. They'll pass out of it. Small left corner, three on the way and in. The first three of the game is up and in for the Trailblazers, or excuse me, for the Mavericks. Yeah, and just too easy to make that pass to the corner. And then a travel the other way. Oh, Frank yeah. Stain travels. And here we go, 41-35, not 20 seconds in to the second half, and the Mavericks already with some early momentum. Yeah, that's a, that's a lackadaisical start for Dixie State, no question. Skinner to Dancer. Dancer holding right wing to Nuno, three-point land straight away. 
Picked up by Paganikoff. He's backing in on Jack. Fades away. Right hand shot off the window and in, and he can do that. He can shoot it from outside. He can drive it and score it. He can post you up. He can score just about any way, and it's 41-37. Dixie State lead quickly, trimmed down to four. Paganikoff, right wing. 19.05 remaining. Backdoor look for Youngblood. Catches, pump fake, missed the layup, tip put back Jared Green up and in. There we go, that's Dixie State offense. Wait for the ball to get reversed. Je right there, Jared Green doing a good job of getting to that spot where he can get that entry pass. Nuno to Skinner to Small. Thought about a three left corner, but Schofield closes out at him. Instead, he gets inside and misses the runner. Ball is loose and off of the hands of Ethan Menzies and into the Colorado Mesa bench. Dixie State will have it back. Yeah, just couldn't secure it. Count it as a stop, right? Yep. yep. Yeah. Count it. Couldn't secure it. Missed that first shot. And that's a good look for Smalls right there, attacking the rim. And then it was almost like they were, you know, set, set, trying to get a spike. Never could get the spike. 43-37, Dixie State by six. Trying to counter the 5-0 run that Colorado Mesa opened with. Chatwin, travel. Did a pump fake. Defender left his feet. Coach Judkins arguing that the pivot foot never left the floor. We'll see for sure here. It's close. It just looks funny. You know, yeah. anytime it looks funny like that, the officials are going to get that. Skinner into the paint, stops the dribble. To Nuno, catches, top of the key, drives to the left. We'll give back to Skinner, short corner left side. Now it's Nuno backing in on Jack, baseline left side. Leaning in against him, and he'll get an offensive foul called. And it's going to go against Nuno. The Dixie State coach is asking for it, and they get the call. Another stop for the Dixie State defense. Yeah, they're going to have to win it on that end. There's no question. And, and you can watch Nuno just kind of, just that extra little bully bounce down in there to Jack Pagenkoff and caught the whistle. And that same official's been, he's been pretty, you know, call, calling everything it feels like in this game. So you got to adjust as a player if he's going to call it tight. And Chatwin gets called for another travel. He caught it in the, the left block, faked left and spun back to the right. Cam's trying too hard, isn't he, guys? Called for travel. Like, they kind of oh. the rope a dope, kind yeah. of the pull, pulled the well, chair out. pulled the chair out, yep. Yeah. But, but I feel like Cam just hasn't got in, let the game come to him yet tonight. Got two fouls and, and just hasn't ever caught rhythm. Clay Verk into the game for the Mavericks. Small, right wing three on the way. It's short, Pagankoff tips it to Chatwin. And Chatwin hands it right back off to Jack. Jack to Chatwin. Back to Pagankoff. The perimeter right side, swing it to Youngblood. Youngblood slicing through the lane from right to left. Missed the runner, grabbed his own rebound. Gifted to the Pagankoff, the Trailblazers will reset. Shot clock, I guess the, they say the shot never hit iron. So the shot clock did not reset. Pagankoff inside looking for Chatwin. Five to shoot. Got to put one up, and Chatwin going to get it to go. Flicks it up off the window, gets some English on it, and spins in. And that's big for him. He needed a bucket like that. Get the confidence back up because he's a valuable asset on this team. 45-37, and Dixie State can't quite get a steal the other way. Cameron Chatwin almost had a steal. You see the effort intensify on the defensive end as well after getting a bucket. Just a, a team guy, Cameron. Got to know him a little bit. I love his energy he brings. Yeah. He'll, he'll, <laughs> he would have ran through the score table if the audience could have got to it. 45-37. Well, the shot clock over there. The scoreboard, I meant to say. 18 to shoot for the Mavericks. Plenty of time. Here's Small. Stops on it. Back out to Dancer. Dancer with 10 to shoot. Driving right. A runner is short. And Pagankoff gets the rebound. That time, Chatwin tipped it, and Jack took the rebound. Pass to Youngblood. Right corner, passes the baseline to Stain, kicks it back out. Chatwin for three, it's up and in, the swish. And the Trailblazers, their first double-digit lead of the night of 48-37. Uh, I just love that extra pass from Frank Stain. Your freshman out there, giving up a shot, could have put it on the bounce. Instead, he finds Chatwin, who just made a bucket, kind of getting some confidence, and then Chat knocks it down. Big three. 48-37, Dixie State, an 11-point lead. Clay driving inside, and he just put an elbow into Hunter Schofield. They're going to call the foul. Makes it look like there was some contact up there. They're going to get the foul call. Schofield goes to the other end, having drawn the charge. Would love to see that one again. Chatwin had just tried to draw the charge, and it wasn't quite. So it was contact below the shoulders from down here. 
It looked like they might have got him up high. But I, I think Schofield did a good job selling yeah. that. And Dixie State got worn on a flop earlier in the half by Pagenkov. But there was contact, though. So, But I think he embellished it a little bit. And a kick ball will take us to the media timeout. 15-55 to go. Trailblazers lead it 48-37. And take the 62nd timeout and come back to the Burns of the Trailblazer Basketball Network. The Trailblazers have their first double-digit lead of the game. 48-37, 15-56 to go. They've answered back with a 7-0 run after Colorado Mesa started the half on a 5-0 run. And Dixie State with the possession. Continue to add on to this thing. Mike, you talked about the first four minutes. Dixie State able to bounce back and win that first four minutes. Now we enter the next critical four-minute stanza. Youngblood, right wing, passing in the end line, left corner three. Frank Stain, no. And Dancer going to reach out and grab the rebound with one hand. Mavericks with it. Skinner. Offensive foul. Moving screen, and Richardson's holding his hands out. Only his first, though. Yeah, it's called for his first. He's back into the game. It's, it's interesting. They let that ride out until that first media timeout, and then they bring him in. Richardson with 16 first half points. He's back in for this Maverick squad, but Dixie State has the possession. Schofield driving inside, and he tries to get it up and under the arm of Clay Burke and missed badly. But Colorado Mesa will turn it over on the way back up the floor. Well, Coach Judkins talking <laughs> about that patience again. You know, that, that's not Hunter Schofield's shot. If he's just a little bit more patient, he'll, it'll come to him. But that turnover really hurts Colorado Mesa, giving Dixie an extra possession up 11. Now Richardson expecting Dancer to be ready for that pass. Dancer didn't see it coming. Danced right over. There you go. 48-37, 11-point Dixie State lead. Here's Paganikoff. The young blood now to Stain. Stain, entry pass to Chatwin, right block. Blocked off to Schofield. 15-footer, right side, rims out. Frank Stain, the offensive rebound. Puts the ball on the floor. A runner with the right hand up and in for the baseline left. 50-37, Dixie State a 13-point lead. Now five now for Frank, but... Did a little bit of everything right there. Got the offensive rebound, made a great move, and got that baseline floater to fall. Whistle and a foul the other way. Youngblood will pick up the foul. That'll be his third. And with that, Andre Wilson up off the bench, likely for Dayson. How about Frank Stain leading the team in rebounding right now? Yeah. He's got five points, five rebounds. And, and that's been the challenge from Coach Judkins and, and this team to say, look, you've got the size and length. We need you to rebound. 50 to 37. Dixie State by 13. Here's Burke, and this time he obliterates Hunter Schofield, and it's going to be a block. Maybe all things even out in the end. That one, he dropped the shoulder and ran over Hunter Schofield. Toughest call in basketball. <laughs> like a fullback. Watch the official. I think he was indecisive because he was moving, and it felt like a charge, yeah. but he was moving. He was moving. And so I think he actually got a right to the dismay of the crowd. But credit Hunter. Sometimes when they put the shoulder in, if you're moving, they'll give you that yeah. call. Yeah. That's the surprising thing about it. Off the inbounds pass. Nuno can't get it to go on the right side. And Dixie State the rebound. So no harm done. 50 to 37. Schofield inside. Frank Stein will score it. What a look from your big man. Hunter Schofield can do it all. Frank Stein lays it up and in for two. 
great assist there by Hunter Schofield, refer returning the favor of all those assists that uh, Stain has given him. Nunez loses the handle, regains over to Burke, left corner, all the way to the right corner. Skinner inside Richardson gets Chatwin off his feet and then scores with the left hand. The, he, the ball fake is so good, it's so underrated. He got him off his feet, easy laying. Chatwin, catch and shoot three straight away, left it short. Frank Stain, offensive rebound to Pagankov. He'll try it, right wing. No, rimmed out, tipped around into the hands of Tommy Nuno. Frank Stain really working hard on both ends of the floor right now. The Trailblazers lead it by 13. Nuno trying to cross over to his left, re loses the handle again. Now has it, 13 to shoot straight away. Down to 10. Nunya dribbles out of a double team. Gets inside, a fadeaway jumper off the back iron. Chatwin, the rebound. NC State has it. Pass ahead to half court and to Pagankoff. And he'll call out the play and slow things down. Time in possession. We got a 13 point lead, no reason to rush things. Looking inside, Schofield is tipped out of bounds. And it will stay with the Trailblazers with 13.01 remaining. 52 39, a 13 point Dixie State lead. Substitutions, Leighton Parker, Jacob Nichols, and Jared Green into the game for Dixie State. You just well, jump. Go I, ahead. I was just going to say, I love the energy. I, you know, Chatwin got off to a really rocky start in this half, and then he re rebounded, got in the flow, and I thought he brought a huge spark to Dixie State in that spurt. Absolutely. Whistles. And a foul against Jared Small. Holding before that ball could be inbounded. It'll be the fourth team foul against Colorado Mesa. Pagan Kopp, the trigger. Into the left corner, Jared Green. Looking for a guard, finds Wilson. Left wing to Nichols. Nichols to Pagan Kopp. To Green, eight to shoot. Pass to Parker, left wing, and it's tipped out of bounds with six seconds on the shot clock. They'll trigger right about the left wing area. You got Andre Wilson to throw it in. And he finds Nichols with five, with four. Will drive inside, throws it up, and he comes, he falls to the floor, Maybe gets back up. Contact. Yeah, need any contact. He's able to hustle back down. Colorado Mesa has it though. Dancer passes the in line to Nuno. Nuno driving in on the right, looking inside for Menzies. Swing it back out, Dancer right wing to Nuno. Pump fake, three-point land straight away, and he's bumped by Jack Pagankoff. And Jack kind of arguing the call right at first and then stops and smiles. Yeah, I fell. I got him right there. Well, it's like guard your yard, right? A yard to your right, yard to your left. You can't let them with the ball get around you that easily. It's just you can see Jack just not getting in the position he wanted to be in. Here's Small inside, he's fouled. And I think I maybe had a chance to count yeah. it, but his teammate knocked it out of there. Maybe it was short, and he was tipping it up. I mean, it, it looked like it point. was gonna bounce around for yeah. a minute, and his teammate pulled it off. This should be a good angle to the see. The basket, it. there's the foul, he gets it up. Yeah. And there's Menzies that came in, and he might have kept that from an and yeah. one. That was interesting, why would Menzies touch that when he's his guy's got a chance for the end one. First free throw up and in for Jared Small. Take one more look at that. There's the bump. He gets the shot up. We'll it never, might have been short we'll from never that know angle. If yeah. Got a friendly bounce. Looked a little left and short, but sometimes those left short ones go up off the glass and then fall back in. Small will have one more. On its way. And too strong off the back iron. Jared Green the rebound. 12 point lead. 52-40, Dixie State, a 12-point lead, 12.07 to play in regulation. Good to see the free throw signs are back. Not, a, not in full force tonight, but we got a few of them. Pagan Kopp to Wilson. Now to Pagan Kopp, bouncing to his right. To Parker, three from the right wing. It rims out, and Skinner the rebound for Colorado Mesa. Skinner to Richardson, mid post right side. Whips a pass to the left corner, three on the way from Colton Peterson, missed, but it's tipped back, and Colorado Mesa will reset. 
They're going to put 18 seconds on the shot clock. And that will bring us to the under 12 media timeout. 11.29 remaining. Dixie State a 12-point lead, 52-40. to 40, But still a lot of basketball to be played. Take a one-minute timeout and come back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Eleven twenty nine to play, Dixie State a 52 to 40 lead. As we come back inside the Burns Arena, it'll be Colorado Mesa basketball. And right now they've got 28 on the shot clock. I'm pretty sure they asked for 18. Well, the official came over to Coach Judd, it's actually Coach Schroeder, because Juddy was in the huddle drawing on the whiteboard, and, and, but we couldn't tell what he was saying. I thought you were right, originally 18. He did say 18 because there was no change of possession. Skinner will drive inside, laid up and in. Wouldn't. Way too easy out of a timeout. You know, you, you try to get your defense set. You can't give up an, a, that easy of a basket. 52-42, Dixie State a 10-point lead. Schofield will drive inside, offensive foul. Ran over Dancer. And Hunter knew it. You know, I think he knew that one. Didn't like it, but knew it. State's been scoreless the last three minutes. They've not been able to put together an offensive possession to result in the bucket. They've, they've, they've kind of lost that patience and, and lost that fill for their offense. Kind of just allowing the Mavs to hang around. Okay. And Leighton Parker reaching in on Michael Skinner on the other end, a senior against the freshman there. Certainly the, this 52-42, this is at a pace that Dixie State likes. I mean, they didn't want to play the Mavericks in an 80, 90 point game tonight. No. Because that means they're probably right. raining threes, which they are just one of ten from downtown. Ebbs and flows of the season, right? Such a three-point shooting era nowadays, yeah. though. I mean, yeah. such a big part of the game. Skinner into the lane, passes out. Dancer, pump fake on the right wing, drives inside, and he's fouled by Jared Green. And one for Georgie Dancer. Dancer's athletic and, you know, Goes up high, gets it to go. See where the contact came. Just a little chest-to-chest -chest bump as Green was straight up. And the official yeah, felt like, hey, he got him. He touched him. Foul's a foul. Not a, not a lot there. Could you let it go on? Yeah, but he might have blew the whistle before he saw it go in. Nowadays, you're starting to see officials wait to yeah, see if it goes no. in. And then, and I don't like that. So, Dancer missed the free throw. And here comes Dixie State the other way, 52-44. An 8-0 run for Colorado Mesa. After Dixie State led by as many as 13. And a steal for Small. And Small gets the layup to go in transition. 52-46. It's a six-point game. 10-20 to go. And Coach Judkins wants timeout. Got to talk this thing over. And that'll extend to a full timeout, so we'll take it. 10-19 to go. 10-0 run. Excuse me, make that a 9-0 run for the Mavericks. And it's a 52-46 Dixie State lead with 10-19 to go. A 60-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Basketball Network. Hey, what's, what's up, man? man? Hey, good, good, good. You played before, right? Oh, absolutely. It's okay. all state, high school. Good, let's run some routes. Give me a post route. All right, let's do it. We may not always play good, but when we want to look good, we come to the Dixie State Campus Store. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center. We'll see you there.
There is a place where the sun doesn't hide in the winter, where the greens stay green and the crimson canyons still glow. There is a place where dimples determine destiny and a tiny wooden tee holds the outcome in the balance. There is a place where we drive for show, putt for dough, and settle the score with another round. There is a place. Eric Sangmiller joined by Mike Olson and Devin Dixon inside the Burns Arena. It's a 9-0 run for Colorado Mesa. Basketball definitely a game of runs. We'll see if Dixie State can answer back here after the Coach Judkins timeout. Yeah, it is a big possession, I feel like. Six-point game, 52-46, and still a whole 10 minutes to be played. Stain, left wing. Got to find some help. Finds Green, 10 to shoot. Here's Youngblood. Driving to his left, kicks to Andre Wilson for three right wing, and that missed everything and out of bounds. And it goes back to the Mavericks. Uh, yeah, I thought Jason maybe should have tried to dribble drive there instead. Hits Andre, and he's three feet behind the line, contested three. That's not the shot you want. No, not out of a timeout. You know, you mentioned that's a huge bucket. It's still, it's been over three minutes since the last Dixie State bucket. They need to find a way to get on the scores column. Yeah, scoreless in 426, to be precise, wow. are the Trailblazers. And if it's just one of their last six shots from the floor, it is a nine. What is the run right now? 9 0? 9 0 run for the Mavericks. Yeah. We keep it right here through the timeout. Colorado Mesa called the timeout, a full timeout, their second charge timeout of the game. Well, that's their run. That's their run. Yeah, now, that's can their you run. counter run? I mean, game is such a game of momentum. You got to try to grab it back. Get this crowd into this game if you're Dixie State. Yeah. That momentum is going to be huge. You know, and where Colorado Mesa has hurt them on the offensive end is, is, is Dixie not being on the same page defensively. They're not talking. They've kind of lost that energy, and the communication hasn't been real good. Once they get that dialed in, they, they've got to find a way to get those kills that you talked about earlier. They've got to put together three straight stops here out of this timeout. 52-46, 9.55 to go. Another game of note in Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Black Hill State going to the Mexico Highlands. And they lead it 87-83 with four seconds remaining in the second half. And that's the team that's right there, tied with Dixie State atop the RMAC standings. Looking like they're going to get a win in Las Vegas, New Mexico. It's a nice win. Dixie State had to come back from a huge halftime yeah, deficit, no. go to overtime, and score well, like just, 108 to win it. That's just a dangerous team. Just maybe. athleticism oozing off that sideline in Las Vegas, New Mexico. And Dixie State knows that all too well with the first round exit in the RMAC tournament last year. Back in play we go, 9.48 remaining. Dixie State a six point lead. But the Mavericks could cut it in half with a three here. Nuno passing inside for Small. And we're gonna get a foul. And it's gonna be Stain. And it's gonna be free throws. And they're running a back cut from the baseline, from the corner down the baseline, and they've got Dixie State on that a couple times tonight. That's that communication. Dixie's just not finding the rotation, not talking on that back, you know, that back cut that you're talking about. And I, I think Juddy just said to Frank, hey, you're not going to be able to stop that if you follow the ball. You can't turn and follow the ball and look yeah. away because, boom, he goes, and then yeah. you're a step behind. Yeah, you're in trouble. And he, he's also saying to the officials that Small was bobbling the ball. It wasn't Stain that knocked the ball out of his hands. He had lost the ball and was bobbling underneath the basket. Small makes the first free throw. Number two on the way, and it's in. A four-point four point Dixie State lead. It was as many as 13, and it's trimmed to four. Got to break this 11-0 run offensively. Dixie State won for its last seven from the field. Youngblood to Wilson. Wilson to Youngblood, right wing. Dason into the lane, jump stop, high shot, and he missed it. Had to get over the outstretched arms I of his defender. I think he got a piece yeah. on the way up. And here come the Mavericks. Small will step into a three right wing. He hits. 
Uh-oh, a one-point game, 52-51. The double-digit lead is gone. It's a momentum. You know, you, you give them a few good looks at the basket, and they're going to hit it. They're a good team. They can shoot from deep. they got to be careful and not, not let that momentum keep, continue. Pagan Koff, the young blood. Over to Green. A whistle and a foul away from the ball. Let's say small. It's holding. Trailblazers try to cut through the lane. Cameron Chatwin going to check in for Jared Green. Offset. Trying to see if they can give him some you know, spark, kind of like he did early in the half. Small had six at the half. He's got 11 second half points, and now he's got 17 on the night. 35 combined between he and Richardson. Yeah. Paganikoff, step back, three from the right wing. He crossed over Dancer and step back, knocked it down, and it's grill. Four point lead for the Trailblazers. That's a great answer. You know, and we go back to that first key of the game is disrupt Colorado Mesa's rhythm. Here's a chance for Dixie to continue to build on their lead. 55 51, 820 remaining. You can look back, that might be the play of the game if they, no. they, did, they didn't relinquish this lead and let Mesa ever take it. That was a huge three. Nuno will back in on Pagan Kopp and score it, 55-53. We probably could just name that our catering concepts play of the game right there anyway. Dixie State desperately needed a bucket. Youngblood will drive inside, pass to the corner to Jack for three left wing. Bang! How about our catering concept plays of the game? Back-to-back <laughs> -back triples for Jack Paganikov. And now it came off a little flat yeah. and just didn't even, I don't even think it got rimmed, just ripped the cords on the net. That is huge. The jack of all trades shooting the three. 58 53. Dixie stayed by five. 735 remaining. Pagan and Koff. He's got nine now to Got nine. Nuno trapped on the baseline, and Dixie State forces a bad shot. The Trailblazers have it. Jack across the timeline. Kicks to the left corner, Wilson for three, no. Cameron Chatwin almost had the offensive rebound and lost it to Clay Burke. This place was about to go nuts if that three goes down by Andre Wilson. Nuno spinning into the lane, loses, regains, kicks it to Colton Peterson for three right wing, it rattles around and falls through. The lid is officially off for the Mavericks. And it's 58-56, Dixie State by two. We talked about closeouts, Devin, before the game. That closeout, Jack Pagenkopf just went right by him. He didn't even contest that shot. Chatwin, pick and roll, driving inside. He scores it. The pick and roll with Youngblood. And it's a four-point lead for Dixie State, 60-56, to 6.33 to go. And now defense is kind of a, a luxury if you can find it right now. Both teams are executing what they like to do, getting the defense scrambling. Hitting the three if you're Mesa, and then the old pick and roll for the Trailblazers. Dancer to Nuno. Richardson wants it. He gets it. One on one with Schofield. Left block. Backing in. Passes to, to Verk. And Unselfish. Verk cutting the lane. He lays it up in on a good dish from Richardson. Well, that time Cameron Chatwin went over to the double, and it was his guy that just ran right to the front of the rim. The double was good, but the, just not the rotation to help. We're two minutes past the under eight media timeout. Wilson. To the free throw line. Swing it to Chatwin, right wing. He'll take a three to give him space. Missed it. Dancer the rebound. I like there was no hesitation in that three from Cameron. But just couldn't bury it. Nuno driving inside on Youngblood. Gets inside. Misses. Ball tapped around. Gets his own rebound. He's no, missed it. Halfway down. It popped out. I thought we were tied. But it popped out. Dixie State has it. 60-58, to 58, a two-point lead. Pagan Kopp. Hesitates, drives inside, shot is blocked out of bounds. And that'll bring us to the under eight media timeout at the 524 mark. We keep it here. Dixie State, a 60 to 58 lead. And here are our catering concept plays of the game. Jack Pagenkoff, when Dixie State desperately needed something, knocked down back to back buckets. Three point shots brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. And he knocks in one from each wing, one from the right wing, and then next possession, good ball movement. One more from the left wing, and he drains both of them. Oh. Those are your catering concept plays of the game. Yeah, and they needed it because the shooting has not been kind. They have not gotten it to really drop consistently. Dixie State just 8 out of 22, 36%, and 3 of 10 from downtown. So those two threes by Jack were so big to help him out. 
And, you know, so far they've been able to maintain that lead, but boy, Mace is bringing the energy on the road, man. They're firing each other up, they're communicating, they're well coached, and they are in this game. If, if, if I'm their head coach, I'm, I'm really pleased with the, the spot I'm in right now. That said, Dixie State's got to try to find a way to hold them off because this is kind of what we expected, though, isn't it, guys? Kind of coming into yeah. this game all week long? Absolutely. I mean, there's no way that Colorado Mace was going to come in here and lay down. And they're definitely showing why they're at the top of the, the RMAC conference with Dixie State. They're very versatile. They can shoot the ball, but they've also got some very skilled post players that can pound it inside and cause some problems in the paint. Yeah, good rebounding team, too. You look at rebounding. I mean, it's tight right now. 27 for Mesa, 30 for Dixie State. That's something they always take so much pride in. They got some long guys like Richardson, like Burke, like uh, Small. Those guys are athletic and can really rebound. Here we go. Out of the timeout, Jack Pagenkopf to Trevor. Baseline left side. Gets it. Left corner three. No. Hunter Schofield is not the last to touch it. I thought it might have gone off him. They're going to say off Mesa. Dixie State will maintain. <laughs> Clearly was Vert. As we see the replay, back in for Dixie State. Two-point lead for the Trailblazers. Here's Stain bouncing inside, trying to find Chetwin, and it's stolen by Menzies. And now Mesa can tie or take the lead on this possession. That's Frank just trying to run the offense when it's really not there. He didn't let his guy establish that block position to enter that pass into the post. And Colorado Mesa has not led in this game. Into the corner, Virk for three. Yes, first lead of the game. Virk, the big man, he can shoot it from outside though. 61-60, Colorado Mesa has its first lead of the game. Pagankoff, jumper, banked it in. 62-61, Dixie State wrestles the lead back. Big time players make big time shots. That's it. Off the window, Jack, four of 11, 11 points, three of six from downtown, six assists. He came to play tonight, but he's got to keep it rolling. 62-61, Dixie State by one, 420 to play. Approaching the under four media timeout now. Here's Nunez. Nunez with five to shoot. Driving to his left, will step it back. Hands off to Skinner. Skinner into the lane, will score it, but I don't know, did he get that shot off? I think so, just barely. He barely I beat the shot clock, and they're gonna give it to him. 63-62, I would love to see that one again. On slow-mo replay, not gonna matter now. Stain will bounce inside Schofield. Colorado Mesa leading. And a foul, an armbar foul, gonna go against Virk. And that'll bring us to the under four media timeout. The Dixie State trailing 63-62. We get a look at the Skinner. Just got it off in time. Trailblazers trailing 63-62, 3.48 to go. And we'll keep it right here. Let's continue to talk through this thing. We also, during the last break, didn't have a chance to do so. We want to take a quick look ahead at our SkyWest Airlines player of the game watch. Right now, Hunter Schofield with 15 points, 7 of 10 from the field. Day uh, Jack Pagenkopf, though, coming on strong. He's only 4 for 11 from the field, but all of his shots have come late in this second half. He's got three rebounds and six assists as well. I think really for Dixie State, it's between those two guys. You're going to try to name kind of who you're looking for for your SkyWest Airlines player of the game. Well, I think both teams have adjusted. Huge first half for Schofield and for Richardson. Both defenses have really shut them down in the second half as far as scoring the basketball. They're still doing some other things, right? But the scoring the basketball is coming from elsewhere. Smalls picked it up for the Mavericks. And then Pagan Cops picked it up like you alluded to, Kerr. I'll tell you what, Virk was really frustrated. I don't know if you guys noticed, coming off the court, he kind of was waving at the official, and he was this close to getting a technical. Good job by his teammates kind of getting in front of him and kind of wrapping him up and just taking him to the bench. And, Official was pretty patient there. It would have been a short fuse T, but he was kind of giving him that look like you're on the verge, buddy. And, you know, in a game like this tight, that could really be detrimental to either Huge. team with a mistake like that mentally. Absolutely. And he's out of the game now. And Dixie State with possession. Youngblood has it knocked out of his hands. It goes out of bounds. Dixie State to maintain. 18 fouls against Dixie State, six against Colorado Mesa. So both teams in the bonus now. Pagan Kopf. Hesitates, then drives inside, draws some contact, no whistle, but he scores it. 
off the window. He's got 13, and he has taken over for Dixie State over the last four minutes. You love that mentality. Just give me the ball and let, let me go. And a great shot there by Jack Pickenkopf. Nuno, top of the key to Dancer. Pump fake, drives into the lane, kicks to Skinner. Left corner, three on the way. Missed it, shot it over the rim. And Frank Stain has the rebound. He'll hand off to Jack Pagenkopf with 3.18 to go. And Dixie State a 64-63 lead. Here's Jack behind the back dribble, fires a shot. Missed it in the rebound to Nuno and Colorado Mesa. That shot, probably a little too quick. You're kind of a heat checker, right? Yep. Jared Small will hand off to Nuno. Getting late in this game. Nuno, the lefty layup. No. Ball is tapped out of bounds I think young by Blood. Youngblood. Yeah. He just was trying to tip it to himself and touched it last. Wilson coming in for Frank Stain. Frank's played a lot of minutes tonight, 24 minutes so far. But Schofield's played 34, and Jack Pankoff's played 32. Uh -huh. Those guys, every night, they play a ton Hunt of minutes. And Hunter Schofield, left hand is bleeding. So they're going to give him time. He had 20 seconds to get that fake. So yeah. Kelby Hoffine. Kelby Hoffine, one of our great Intermountain trainers. Well, they're going to give him 20 seconds, and then they're going to resume. So he might have to get a sub as they're going down to the end of the bench. About 10 seconds and they left. Hit, yeah, they hit the end of the 20 seconds. They're going to bring Jared Green in and see how quick. Now, now Hunter's back in. But he didn't get out here quick enough. No, nobody gave Kelby a butter. Nobody told him he was down to 10 seconds on yeah. the clock. Dude, that was pretty good. That was Kelby like a, got him out quick. That was like so that's an eight-second NASCAR pit stop right that's there. Right. Kelby was on it. Good work, Alphines. Good job by Coach Judkins to keep uh, Hunter off the floor. He was just going to run back out there to play. <laughs> Nuno with a shot clock down to eight for the Mavericks. To Peterson, left wing three off the back iron. And Jacob Nichols gets the rebound, tiptoes the in line and saves it in to Paganikoff. Trailblazers with it with 2.30 remaining, and we are getting late here inside the Burns. Every possession crucial. And an offensive foul against Jared Green. He was trying to slide into his pick and roll, and he's going to get called for a moving screen. That was a great play. Dixie had that set up perfectly. Jared Green probably just rolled a little bit too early, didn't get set on a screen. Uh, that, that, that's a costly turnover there, but now they've got to answer it on defense. 2.21 to go. They've got to get some stops. Hunter Schofield back into the game for the Trailblazers. Here's Dancer leaning in on Youngblood. The runner, no. Ball tapped back out and out of bounds. Should go to the Trailblazers, and it does. 2.09 remaining. Dixie State has got it. And it's been a one-point game and it's for quite some time. You gotta get this crowd into this game on these last few defensive yeah. possessions, and it'll help if they can get a bucket here and push this lead up. You're not comfortable at all with a one point lead at all. 64 63. We are under two now. 155 remaining. Trailblazers by one. Need a bucket here. On a 13 second shot clock. Hand off to Wilson, to Schofield. To the left side, Youngblood. Five to shoot to Hunter. Off the window and in. Nice Schofield little. gets it. Coach Judkins wants a timeout. They don't see him. He's clear out onto the court trying to call the timeout. They didn't look at him. 66-63. He wanted to draw up the defense. Nuno with 129 remaining. Now to Dancer. Dancer back to Nuno. 14 to shoot. Three-point land straight away. Now Richardson guarded by Schofield. Backing in on Hunter. And gets it to go and a foul. The initial contact came from Richardson, kind of got Schofield backpedaling. Well, Richardson's, his footwork is yeah. elite. You know, one of the, uh, he's the best big I've seen footwork-wise, length-wise. He looks like the complete package now with 20 on the night. The old-fashioned three-point play opportunity from the stripe coming for him. And I think you're right, Kirk. I think he was giving ground there, and, and then just a little bump. Just, just enough to just draw got the whistle. Him. Yeah, but well, it just got Schofield off his balance. Well, did you guys hear Draymond Green's comments last night? You know, and I, that's coming from a defensive player, but a little bit of truth to that. The, the offensive players are at such an advantage anymore at initiating the contact, and it always gets called on the defense. Right. Yeah. Well, with that possession right there, I mean, they got them. They got free the throws good. Play that they were wanted. tied. You know, they, they wanted that, that post. They've got Dixie's got to have more ball pressure, make that entry pass a little bit harder. Sure. Yeah. Here's Pagan Cop. Pulls up for three right wing. Bang! 
Jack Pegenkov again. And this time, Coach Judkins gets his timeout. Jack says, I'm getting that three-point lead back. Oh, uh, Juddy had to go six feet out. They didn't see him again, and what a shot. Big-time player making big-time shots down the stretch. Pagan Cuff, down it goes. It's a 30-second timeout, so we keep it here. We don't want to miss anything. Timeout's brought to you by Dairy Queen. A highlight so big, we can keep running that back all yeah. night long. Jack Pagan Cuff, he's got 16, four of seven from beyond the arc. And he has come on. And we're going to take another look at it. Different angle. The crossover, the step back, and splashes at home. He knows. That's unguardable. No, he's walking back already. Yeah, that's a tough shot. That was, he's been watching James Harden a little bit with that step back right there. That, that was untouchable. You cannot block that shot. Jack Pedgoff only 6'3, but he got such a huge step back. Watch that crossover back. Just no chance to recover there by Dancer. What a shot. Must be a Mike leader. Olsen back in the day. Back in the, the day, I saw, I saw Jack, do, or I saw Mike doing that at the HPC yesterday. What are you talking about? <laughs> old man game, don't question the old man game. Dixie State showing full court pressure out of the timeout. Couldn't get a tip or a steal, so now they'll back off. 55 seconds on the game clock. Dixie State a three-point lead, 69-60 cents. Don't want a foul here. Nuno into the lane, to the right corner. Peterson to answer no, and into the hands of Jack Pagenkoff. And they're going to call a foul. On a hard box out on Nichols? On Jacob Nichols. And the Blue Birds rain down. He's trying to find his man to, to box him, and he does bump him when he's in the air, so it kind of throws the hip out there on Nuno. And the outside official kind of saw him just kind of jerk, and I think that's and they, a pretty. And the referees, they, they're discussing. I, I see the one ref saying 24. Is that on yeah. 24? I think it and is. They're going to call it on somebody. It has to be. And I think they want to look at it. They're coming over to the table. Yeah, it, it's on 24. Jacob Nichols. And it, is it a. And Nichols is doing everything right. He's trying to find a body yeah. to box out. It's just where that ball caromed and where he was at, he couldn't get there quick enough to, to get a seal and ends up with the bump on the hip and the contacts, what the officials saw. And I, I don't know that I can argue that. I mean, you hate to see the officials decide it in the end. You like to let him play through stuff yeah. a little bit there. But if that's a foul in the first half, is a foul right now down the that's stretch. Right. It should be, right? Yeah. yeah. I think where, where it looked funny is he, he traveled such a long distance to block him off. He went a full out run, two or three steps, and then made contact. Where if it would have been a one step and, and then a box out, they probably wouldn't have called it. But where he ran into him, that had definitely just caused it to look funny. And the official thought it was a foul. Huge call, though, in that situation. Huge call. And the official, Huge I don't call. think, wanted to call that. I think, I think he had to. I really do. I think he saw enough. If you look at the Mesa, or Colorado Mesa bench, they weren't complaining about it. You know, they weren't wanting the call. I mean, the, the play had True. started to come down the court, and, and they weren't contesting it. So, uh, definitely a game changer. Nuno, front ended. I'll Not tell you, the front end. He's got two free throws. Here's Who the, makes the first? Here's the thing. I mean, in football, you can go confer with your buddies and wave off a flag. Basketball, it happens so fast. you yep. got to make the call you think, and you got to hope you get it right 99% of the time, which is right. very difficult to do. That's right. Nuno will have one more free throw. Good free throw shooter this season, 80%. Tonight he's two of four on the way, and he gets this one. One point game, 69-68, and Pagenkoff needs someone to throw the ball into him. And Wilson gonna hustle back and get it into Jack Pagenkoff. 42 seconds remaining. Wilson to Jack. Jack, step back, another three. Another three! Jack Pagenkoff is out of this world! 19 on the night, his fifth three. And watch the move again off the high ball screen. He's gonna go through the legs and step back, and there's nobody there. Breakdown on defense, and Jack buries another one. That's a huge shot. You know, you love his confidence, and you know, it, you, we've said it tonight. Big time players make big time plays, and it doesn't get any bigger than that shot right there for Jack Pagenkoff to extend this lead to four with 32 and a half seconds to go. You see this crossover step back, huge shot by Jack Pagenkoff. 
Uh, they, they're, so, they're talking about who called the timeout and if they actually have a timeout or no timeout. And now they're finally saying, they, the referees were saying no timeout, no timeout, and now Colorado Mesa has finally called one. Well, what's funny is Juddy got a full <laughs> timeout because as soon as they blew the whistle, he grabbed his whiteboard and went to work. He didn't care what was going on. He heard a whistle. So it was marker, whiteboard, play. It's a 30-second timeout. And if you're not at the Burns Arena tonight and you live in St. George, you're missing out. This is a just great battle between two well-coached teams with a lot of talent, great product on the court. Two coaches coaching their tails off. Coaches for cancer night. Hey, guess what? There's another home game tomorrow night. You can come join us. It doesn't get any bigger. You know, so much at stake with, with getting ready to, to hit February. That's a huge month. And, and both these teams jockeying for position for the top of the RMAC and, and Dixie doing exactly what they've done when they've had that number one title, and that's defend it and continue to make statements in the RMAC. Yeah, Jack, the way they went out the Pac West, right? Yeah, that's right. They, 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 uh, they were happy to see the Dixie State lead the Pac West as they were hanging another banner on their way out. Do it again. What? You can't even say second half for Jack Pagankoff. What a oh. last five minutes of the game for Jack Pagankoff. Sensational. Inbound with 32 seconds. Mesa's got to go the full length of the floor, and it's a four-point game, 72-68. Dancer with 24 seconds remaining. Denunio has it stripped out of his hands by who else? Jack Pagankoff, and he is fouled on his way up the floor, and free throws coming for Jack Pagankoff. There's no question. He's putting his team on his back on both ends of the floor. I mean, the anticipation there comes over, help defense, sees him show the ball, and just strips it cleanly. Great defensive play there by Jack, getting his hands in and, and getting the play and then coming down and get fouled. So with 19.2 to go, four-point lead, this is the guy for Dixie State you want to see on the line. And Jack had the ball ready to shoot it. And they take it out of his hands to confirm that it's a one and one. First one on the way, yes. What the chances we see a step back free throw here by Jack Packing, <laughs> Jack Pagankoff. Only if he does crossover first. 20 you to nine. cross it over. I mean, five minutes ago, Jack Pagankoff had like six points. Yeah. Well, he had six at the half, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't score for a long time there in the first That's 10 what minutes. I'm saying. Well, he makes both free throws and it's a six point game. But if you look back, I, I would still think the biggest shot he hit was that three-pointer to end the 11-0 yeah. run by yeah. Colorado Mason. So he got things going early with that big three-pointer, and he has not dropped an ounce of confidence since. Well, yeah, it got it going, didn't it? Yeah. And, and they've needed every one of those. Inbound with 19 seconds to go. It's a six-point game. Don't want to foul here and stop the clock. Nuno will fire deep three, missed it, and Jack Pagan cop the rebound, and he's just going to dribble it out. Gets across half court, and he'll dribble it out. Dixie State gonna win it. It got hairy for a minute, and then Jack Pagenkopf said, all right, enough is Get enough. Get on my back. Let's go. He was clutch. There's no question. Sky West Airlines player of the game, Jack Pagenkopf. Seal it, fly it to wherever you want. Done deal. Done. I, I mean, and I think the opposing players and coaches would agree with you. Everybody in the building saw it. I mean, he was just big. At, Big shot after big shot. I mean, watch this. Crossover to a step back. Nothing but the bottom. I just, and then the steal. I just want, I want to be a spectator right now. I just want to sit and watch Jack Pagan hitting those five. He hit all five of those in the second half. One of the first, four in the second, late. And the Trailblazers win it 74. 68 improved to 15 and 3, 10 and 2. You want to talk about a burst of momentum. Things were getting hairy, things were getting close. The senior captain says, no, let's go. We're going to win this game. And now they take all the momentum in the world into Saturday night against Western Colorado. Yeah, 4 and 7 team in conference. They're playing Westminster tonight. I haven't seen a score on that game yet. But I mean, what a job defensively in the second half on Richardson adjusting on the ball screens. Yeah. You know, Small got his. They held Skinner in check. Nuno only nine tonight. This game was one on the defensive end, but at the end it feels like Pagankov just won it by himself almost, doesn't it? It totally feels that way. And he, he did exactly what he needed to do. We, we were wondering who was going to be that guy to step up and make the play. They really put some concentrated effort there to stop Schofield and, and had some, some success there defensively on Hunter Schofield, and that just opened it up. That door was wide open for Jack Pagankov to finish this game. And it, 
you, when was the last time we saw a game at Burns Arena where somebody just completely took over like Jack Pagenkopf just did? My Man, oh Trevor my. Trevor Hill maybe? Trevor Hill, yeah. Trevor Hill. I mean, that's. Juan Thompson did it a couple times. I saw Mason Sawyer do it a couple times too, but. That was impressive. man. Oh man! Let's let's look at our second half highlights. So we can get our TV crew on the way, and we can finish things up here. Jack Payton covered it was Cameron Chatwin. He was, he was a little shaky coming in, then he settled down, and he played some big minutes early in that second half for the Trailblazers. Frank Stain see Chatwin get the layup and the three from the left wing, and he was feeling it at that point. Great set of minutes early to help set the tone for the Trailblazers. Frank Stain. The floater up and in, baseline left side. And then scoring again. And Frank played well tonight, rebounded yeah. the ball well, very active, but Jack Pagenkopf, I can watch that over and over and, and this, over. He's going to be the last I think, 30 seconds of the highlights. I think me and Carrick are going to have to go out there and work on that after the post-game report yes. because that is pretty. I want to do that. And there's uh, a second three for Jack. And they just kept feeding him. And then Chatwin got a big bucket. Really well. In that stretch as well. A little breakdown there on defense. The Trailblazers made him pay. But Jack showing you the mid range with a kiss off the window. Pretty shot there. That was a big bucket, too, because they cut bucket. it back to one at that point again. Get Hunter Schofield getting the bucket late. And then Jack Pagenkoff again. He did the same thing three times, and it worked every time. That was Michael Jordan, Brian Russell. Yeah, but without the push off. <laughs> Conspiracy. And then there's the steal to wrap things up. He would make the free throws. And Jack Pagenkopf, our SkyWest Airlines player of the game. Trailblazers win it 74-68. We want to bid farewell to our TV audience. If you want to listen to the Guru Sports Drill postgame report, uh, turn your radio dial to ESPN 97.7 FM locally, sportsradio 977.com online or you can uh, download the Sports Radio 977 uh, app on your phone, Android or iPhone, listen in, because you're going to want to hear what Coach Judkins has to say tonight. Big shout out and a big thank you to our CEC TV crew tonight, Marcus and James and Lauren and the entire crew. Thank you for all you do. That'll do it for the TV side. On the radio side, three-minute timeout and back with our post-game comments with head coach John Judkins, and we'll break this thing down. Back after three on the radio side. <laughs>